Lover 1989 here, and welcome to another reaction episode. You just didn't notice the towel on my head from my first vid from the first video. Well, I just got out of the shower. That's why. Also, but also, like I said in the video, by the time you see this, it will be uploaded tomorrow. Okay. I'm I'm. I'm requested another suggestion by something different 765 and it is home glide made by home glider 13 bad games star fox adventures gamecube review I used to play this game on gamecube back when I was growing up and it was a really it was a really good game though but considering it's one of the top 100 best gamecube games by metacritic that was that was uploaded by by Gary, who made the top 100 best video games of all time. So, anyway, here we go with three, two, one, and. I think, I think by, by now, now, just about, just about everybody, everybody in this gaming team. community, especially, especially those who watch a lot of those random fun gaming facts videos, knows about the story of Rare. Rare was Rareware. a developer who initially started out making games for Nintendo Entertainment System, but what later happened was they purchased a bunch of expensive silicon graphics workstations, which were designed for 3D rendering and are probably best known for their usage in various Hollywood movies, such as Jurassic Park. In fact, you know the Unix system from that movie? That was a silicon graphics workstation. So, what happened was they used these expensive 3D workstations to churn out Super Nintendo games and arcade games, in the case of Killer Instinct, with 3D pre-rendered graphics that had already been rendered by these Killer Instinct made by Rareware. And the system just displayed them as sprites. And what happened was this allowed Rare to have a technical edge over the competition who were still using older styled sprites. One of the most notable things about Rare in the 90s was that they developed a lot of games for Nintendo systems as Nintendo purchased a controlling share in them and made them a second party developer. For example, Rare was not only known for making the character platformers, Banjo-Kazooie, and of course the Donkey Kong games, but they were also known for making several first person shooters which were Perfect Dark Perfect and Dark, GoldenEye 007. GoldenEye 007. Bond movie. Now, these two games were pretty popular, even if they haven't aged well, you'll still see many people talking about how great they were in the 90s, and you'll also see lots of people who never played the games talking about how great they were anyway because they purchased a cartridge for a few dollars off Amazon. However, eventually, with many companies, it seems like a streak of good games always has to come to an end somewhere, and what happened was there was turnover at Rare. Even before the Microsoft buyout, you had many employees leaving Rare, with one of the most notable studios being formed from ex-Rare employees being Free Radical Design, who made the well-known Time Splitter series of first-person shooters. Time Splitter? By nope, not interested in the shooter games. And released a few Xbox 360 launch titles, a few original Xbox. Except I'm interested in TF2. And of course, what really caused controversy was when Microsoft chose Rare to develop a lot of stuff related to Kinect, 360 avatars, and the like. And this caused a lot of controversy because they weren't developing video games. And eventually, there was a lot of layoffs due to stuff such as Microsoft moving away from Kinect and games selling poorly. And this, like I said, caused controversy. And of course, there's already been a spiritual successor announced to an old Rare game, which has racked up loads of money on Kickstarter, because as we all know, anything on Kickstarter that's a spiritual successor to something is going to rack up money. But to be fair, I've not really played a lot of Rare games, so I only know what people online have said about Rare, and all I know is that if you mention Rare, you'll cause a great big flame war. What I do know, though, is that from what I've played of Star Fox Adventures, which is the game I'm reviewing, it's not that great of a game. Now, Star Fox Adventures not only has a unique development history, but it was also the last game that Rare made on Nintendo system, as the same day this game came out in America was the day that Microsoft bought Rare. Now, Star Fox Adventures originally was not going to be a Star Fox game. 
it was actually going to be an entirely different game called Dinosaur Planet for the Nintendo. A canceled game for N64. But then Miyamoto came and asked to put his persona in the game. And so what they did was, because the main character looked a lot like Fox McCloud, they changed the game to be a Star Fox branded game and a launch era game too for the Nintendo GameCube instead of a Nintendo 64 game. And then Miyamoto wanted his persona, Fox McCloud, in the game. So what they did was they not only decided to make it a GameCube launch era game to boost sales, but they also added the Star Fox branding to it so that, you know, people would buy the game because it said Star Fox on the package. And then they also made it so it would be Star Fox based, like I said. But what happened was they had to rewrite some of the plot because sorry, I had to blow a net off of my laptop's and the sudden monitor was not accepted willingly by all the staff because of this. And well, eventually the game came out as an early GameCube title and it sold a bunch of copies. But either way, I'm going to talk about this game now and how it actually is. So let's start the review. So Star Fox Adventures could pretty much be summed up as like Zelda with furries, as that's pretty much what the game is. The whole game's premise is this. You're on some planet and you have Crystal who's supposed to be guarding something or something, I don't know. And apparently something happens to her and then you're Fox McCloud, you see this whole planet screwed up with bits missing from it. And your whole goal is that you have to save it or do something. I mean, it feels entirely out of place for a Star Fox game. And after you play this game, you can really see why this game is like not a very good Star Fox game because everything is just out of place. It does not fit very well with Star Fox. It just doesn't. And, and I know I might sound like I'm complaining, but you got to remember, even in the theming of the game, it doesn't fit very well. It's like they threw Star F like Fox McCloud into a random game. That's what it feels like because none of this even fits very well with the whole Star Fox universe or at least what's seen of it in the games because the games themselves are pretty much you're going around, you're shooting stuff, that's it. But if there's anything this game did add to the Star Fox universe, it did add Crystal, furry waifu, just like how uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, like, you know, the American one, just like how that game added Shy Guys and Birdos to the series. And even Super Mario Brothers 2 feels more like a Mario game than Star Fox Adventures feels like a Star Fox game. I mean, the theming of this game is very un-Star Fox-like. It just does not make sense. It's like they added it in to sell more copies. And another thing that this game does is, when you play it, you can tell the controls of age poorly because the C-Stick just lets you select items. Well, gee, didn't game developers eventually realize that that's what the D-pad's for and not the other analog stick? I mean, here's the thing. It does not work very well with the other analog stick because many games, especially modern ones, but also games made since Halo 1, which came out a year before this game did, use the other analog stick to look around. And it works a lot better than it does when you're like, let's just say, aiming with the lock-on button. The lock-on aiming does not work as well as dual stick aiming does. It's a fact. It's known. There's a reason oh. why games do not use lock-on aiming anymore. It just does not work very well. And here's the thing, though, that really is the worst part about this game. This game is just boring gameplay-wise. I mean, I played, like, I don't know, 30 minutes of it, and that was just a tutorial. Then I played, like, another 30 minutes, and here's the thing. Kind of for more to go because kind of like Zelda, they really don't give you a very good direction on where you're supposed to go. Like, they don't really give you a vampire. I can't read your mind. You can, however, purchase the game guide or go on game FAQs and look up a walkthrough. Yeah, and, how I, and that's why I had to do it. And here's the thing yeah. looking up walkthroughs is not fun. Finding stuff yourself is a lot more rewarding than having to look up a walkthrough. And that's the thing with the game design it is not designed very well. And that's probably the worst thing about this game. You used to get my brain on the left side of my head. At hooking you in. However, the game does do one thing, like right, and that's the graphics. The graphics, especially for a launch era GameCube title, look pretty good. And especially with the fur of the characters, you can tell that Rare really wanted you to notice that they put a lot of effort into the detail of the main models. 
So, like, Star Fox and Crystal, I mean, Fox the Cloud and Crystal, they both have very, very detailed fur, which, especially for a GameCube game. But here's the thing, though. The game itself just doesn't play that great, and it just doesn't, it hasn't really aged that well, especially when you look at the controls and when you look at how the game plays. And the music wasn't very memorable for me either, and that's the thing with this game. This game just isn't that great. It's pretty bland and forgettable. So why is this a bad game? Simple. The game especially tries to leech off the success of another game series despite feeling like they just tacked another game onto this game. I mean, maybe if the game came out in its original form, it might have been more interesting, especially with lore and stuff. But here's the thing. It just makes no sense because they took a random game and added Star Fox stuff to it. I mean... It just doesn't go very well, and to make matters worse, this is a pretty boring game anyways. And, and that's all that really needs to be said. This game just isn't that great. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Oh yeah, one more thing. If this game is how Rare was before they went out of business, then I'm guessing Rare must not have been that great of a company. Of course, maybe I'm wrong. I honestly haven't played many Rare games. I'm probably going to get the Rare replay later on when that game comes out to see what all the whole hype's about with Rare. But, yeah, this game just isn't that great. It's pretty boring. That's all that needs to be said. Sorry, I was trying to kill a gnat. Well, I gotta say, I know that you rant that it is the most terrible game that's ever released, but... But according to Wikipedia, it was, according to Wikipedia, it says it's very well received with positive reviews, notably for the detailed graphics, the new designs and characters, and the dynamic environments. However, the voice acting and the departure from the traditional style gameplay received criticism. This was basically released, this was released in September 23rd, 2002, as Rare wears only GameCube game and final game that Rare developed by my just before being purchased by Microsoft the day after the game was released. The game's story takes place eight years after the events of the N64 game, where the players control Fox McCloud, who is on a mission to visit the to to visit planet in the Lilac system and prevent its destruction. So, it was released in Japan after the U.S. release, so, I don't blame you for, I don't blame you for, for, I don't blame you for criticizing the ter that game that is so terrible. They just, they, they, they just, they just want to combine the elements of Zelda and Star Fox to get, elements of Zelda and Star Fox and how it, how we can all get used to the to the sub puzzle solving and the sto game story and the and the elements. I don't blame you. Anyway, that was my reaction to bad game Star Fox Adventures GameCube review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like me to react to more reviews on video games like this, comment down below. And another reminder, if you really want me to watch and react to an entire anime TV series called Pokemon, please comment down below. Also, if you like my reaction to this video, click a thumbs up, give this video a like, subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell for a notification if you want to notify me of something. Pony Lover 1989 signing off, and I'll see you all later.